Hello everyone, welcome back to the Akita Life. My name is Tony and with me as always is Haga the American Akita. And today we're gonna to be talking about how much do Akitas and Akita puppies cost. So if you're thinking about getting an Akita, this is a must watch for you. Let's get into it. So when people are thinking about getting a dog, they're often looking at the adoption price or if they're looking to buy a purebred dog from a breeder, they're looking at the cost of the puppy and puppies can be expensive. And what's very important for you to know is the purchasing price of your new pet is only the start of the expenses. So we're gonna talk about the price of puppies for Akitas and then we're gonna talk about the first year expenses to give you a very realistic picture of financially what it's going to cost to have one of these dogs. So we often on this channel talk so much about reputable breeders and the truth is reputable breeders will more than often charge a little bit more than backyard breeders or puppy mills. Now with that said, that doesn't mean just because someone is asking a high price for a puppy that they're coming from a good breeder. We have so many resources on this channel but also on our website theakitalife.com where you can learn about what to look for in a breeder but essentially you're looking for people who have a great pedigree, ideal Ideally, they show their dogs and they have all the health checks as far as the eyes and all the joints, the hips, everything like that, which are called OFA scores. A reputable breeder will most likely charge between $1,200 and $3,000 for a new puppy. And what that price is based on depends on several different things, but just because a dog is more expensive doesn't necessarily mean it's a better dog. We paid $2,500 for Haga and that was because he came from a pedigree of two great show dogs. The sire of the litter had already produced a lot of other champion show dogs as well. So that is why they could justify that higher price. We took Haga home in July of 2020 and you know exactly what was going on in the world at that time. So we had to get him from a breeder in Idaho. We went through Paradise Akitas and I'll put the link to them below. And we're located on the East Coast in New Hampshire. So when we paid the $2,500, that was just the start. Then we had to figure out how to get this guy across the entire country. The sire of the litter owned by a different breeder in Illinois, and she was actually also taking a puppy from that litter as well. So she flew from Illinois to Idaho to get her puppy and to get Haga and brought them both back to Illinois, which cost us $400 to transport them on the plane. And then we drove from New Hampshire out to Illinois to pick Haga up and between the gas, the lodging, and the food for that trip, that was about another $1,200. So we are already up over $4,000 at this point. And when you bring your puppy home, that is really, truly when the expenses start. Because before you even bring the puppy into the household, you have to have a whole bunch of tools to make this transition successful for everybody. And this includes a crate food bowl, water bowl, the food itself, of course, leash, collar, maybe a harness. Actually, we went with a few different leashes of different lengths for training purposes, training treats, treats, toys, uh, different pens and crate and gates to section off your home. Fortunately, we only really needed one for that. But if you, depending on the layout of your home, you might need multiple gates to keep your puppy in specific areas. And in total, all of those tools that we had to have to bring Haga home cost about another thousand dollars. Of course, all dogs need veterinary care. So that first year of your puppy's life is going to be probably the most expensive in terms of vet expenses until much later in life when some of those age-related health issues start to pop up. Because you have to bring a puppy to the vet so frequently, we actually ended up going with Banfield's membership plan. This gets you unlimited visits and some of the medications and vaccines are included in the plan. They have some different options, but the plan was about $65 per month, which brings the first year total to over $700. We also decided to go with pet insurance because we know that this particular breed does have some significant health issues that can happen, specifically GDV or bloat. We have a whole video about that. I highly, highly recommend you watch that. If you own an Akita, you have to tackle this problem ahead of time. So go watch that video. But having pet insurance is extremely important for Akitas because they are prone to autoimmune diseases and they're prone to GDV, like I said. 
Sometimes they have hip and, and other issues with, related with their joints because they are larger dogs. If you look at the cost of like an ACL surgery or the surgery to fix bloat if your dog gets bloat, these surgeries are typically thousands and thousands of dollars. We're not talking about 800 bucks or 1200 bucks. We're talking about 3000 4000 8000 dollars depending on what the dog needs. So having good pet insurance is extremely important. We go with OD Pet Insurance. I personally find that it's the best balance of what you're getting versus the monthly cost. I'll put a link below that you can go check that out, but we're currently paying about $50 a month for our plan. That's one of the better plans that they offer just because I wanna have a lower deductible. That's just the way I like to do it, but they do have cheaper plans available. And the earlier you start with pet insurance, the better, because if you wait until these health issues crop up, a lot of uh, pet insurance companies will deny you from getting it because the dog has pre-existing conditions. So at that point, you're kind of screwed. All right, so let's talk about dog food. Of course, there's a million different options for that as well. We tend to stick with just a regular dry kibble. We're spending about 50 to $60 per month on dog food as well. So that's about another $600 per year just for dog food. And that doesn't include all the other stuff that we give him, of course, peanut butter, yogurt, sweet potatoes, um, some treats, greenies, things like that. So that's just his main kibble. Of course, everybody knows that Akita can be a little bit of a difficult breed as far as training and also interaction with other people and other animals because they are a very strong-willed independent breed they're very aloof they do like to kind of be by themselves sometimes so socialization for this breed is extremely important and because they are extremely intelligent and a bit stubborn training can also be difficult so we opted to send Haga away for a week-long training boot camp with the fine folks at really special animals of course, they are local to us, but I will put a link in the description below. And that week-long boot camp was about $1,500, 100% worth it. Uh, the dog came back with so many excellent skills and just set us up with a great foundation to continue his training throughout his life. And so I would highly recommend something like that. Just make sure you do your homework on who you're sending your dog to. But uh, that is another large expense in the first year. Haga loved his trainer at Really Special Animals and they do also offer a weekly daycare or day school program. This is not quite like your normal doggy daycare because it is run only by qualified qualified and really great dog trainers. So I have a lot more confidence in leaving him with them, especially considering sometimes Akitas aren't great with other dogs. Haga loves his friends at Doggy Daycare, so we send him once a week, which is $50 per uh, session so that comes out to about another $2,500 per year in continuing that socialization process again for me it's absolutely worth it because he has such a great time when he goes it's great to maintain that socialization aspect which makes our lives easier when we're bringing him out in public and he always comes home super super tired sleeps great it's just a really good way for him to get some stimulation and exercise and he's so happy and anytime we mention the the school word, he gets very, very excited. Along the way, there's going to be some random vet expenses, things that aren't covered by that Banfield plan or things that uh, won't, wouldn't be covered by your insurance or maybe you don't want to put in an insurance claim for. And some of those random uh, expenses tallied up for us in the first year, about $500. And then, of course, you have to talk about neutering. And with the Akita breed, you have to seriously consider gastropexy. And again, watch our video on GDV and bloat. It's gonna go all over that, but that's a prophylactic or preventative procedure to help minimize the risk of death if the dog does get bloat. And so those two procedures combined, we didn't do it, uh, we didn't do it in his first year of life. We did it at the 14 month mark and that was about another $1,200. I would actually recommend if you are going to neuter your dog to do it a little bit later. We had to do it at the 14 or 15 month mark with Haga because he actually had a growth in his rectum, uh, a polyp, and they were concerned about it being cancerous. It had been there for a month or two already. Sometimes they come out on their own. It didn't seem to be changing other than growing a little bit, so we wanted to get that out of there. And because we wanted to minimize the amount of surgeries he was going to have, we ended up doing the growth removal, the gastropexy, and the neutering all at the same time, right around 14 or 15 months. Of course, beyond that first year, a lot of these expenses continue on. 
the d doggy daycare, the food, of course, the toys, the treats. We also spent probably another $300 in toys uh, in that first year because these puppies grow, they lose interest in some of the toys you got them when they were very little or they a lot of times destroy them. So in total, we spent almost $13,000 to take this dog home. Now, of course, if you were to rescue an Akita versus uh, buying a brand new puppy, you're gonna see a big chunk of that go away. However, you're still talking about multiple thousands of dollars. So we see a lot of times people inquiring online about the prices of Akita puppies. And it makes me a little nervous because if you're thinking, oh, you know, $1,800 is a stretch for me. I really wanted to spend 1,200. The problem is that's just the beginning of the expenses. So it's so important for you to really make sure that you can afford not just to acquire, but also to own and, and give these dogs the life that they really deserve. We tend to splurge and spoil Haga. He's our baby. I don't have kids. So for us, you know, we do spend uh, a lot of extra money on some of the nicer things. We go above and beyond. We get the best insurance policy. We get the best health plan. We send them to the best training. But those are all things that are going to really improve not just the quality of your Akita's life, but also just the well-being and the relationship that you have with your dog. It's just going to be a lot better in the long run. Now, there are some other expenses that you might run into that we personally didn't have, which could be if you travel a lot, you might also need a travel crate. If you go away a lot, you might need to board your dog frequently. If you travel for work, those are all things to consider. And there's also some ways that you can save a little bit of money with the training. Dog training is something that you can do yourself. And as we already mentioned, adopting a Akita might be a little bit more of a financially smart move for you than buying a very expensive puppy. However, also keep in mind that a lot of times rescue dogs might need more training because they were abused previously they might have some separation anxiety or other issues like that so those are all things to consider as well so I hope you found this video informative I really just want people to be prepared when they take one of these dogs home that way they don't have to surrender them because that's how these beautiful dogs end up in rescues in the first place if you have any questions comments or concerns we always love to hear from you so drop them in the comments below and we'll see everyone in the next video Say bye, Haga. Haga, say bye. He's just chilling right now.